beautiful. Nice to meet you. Let's hear it for the beer. All hail to the ale. And welcome to wine for the ladies. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Edinburgh and Beyond. Fine to stand up, beam to you direct via the laws of physics as invented by a British bloke. <laughs> we invented physics, didn't we? <laughs> the British. And this is all you need to know about physics. There, that's it. <laughs> now, <laughs> welcome. And the thing is, though, yeah, you're watching this at home right now. You're watching this at home right now, but there's people in here watching this right now in the actual bloody room, right? And look at this beautiful British audience. The geezer here with the long hair and the beard playing the lady ticket and the fella card simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> You disgust me. What's your name, pal? Chris. Chris beautiful British name. What do you do, Chris? Uh, I work in a picture library. You work in a picture library? Mm. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Is this your girlfriend or someone you'll be photographing later? <laughs> hey. Take your top off, love. It's essential for the quality of the picture. Hey. <laughs> It's vital to the plot of this photograph. You take your top off. <laughs> take your top off, love, please. Take it off. Come on. <laughs> yeah, what's your name, darling? Gillian. Gillian! Beautiful British name. What do you do, Gillian? Tell me. Uh, <laughs> Bearing in mind the correct answer for a woman is, of course, secretary or nurse. <laughs> what do you do? I work in the picture library. You work in a picture library? <laughs> That's an exhibit. <laughs> Yeah, secretary or nurse then? What'd you do? Yeah. <laughs> nurse, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been seeing Chris here, Gillian? Uh, uh, <laughs> a few months. A few months. <laughs> yeah. How's it going, love? Alright. Alright, how's it going, mate? Oh, it's quality. It's quality. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's getting more out of this than someone else, isn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that to Fester. Now, what else do we have? <laughs> What else we got? A young, simple looking lad. What's your name, pal? <laughs> What's, your... What's your name, boy? Seamus. Seamus? Beautiful British name. Now, tell me. <laughs> Actually, I was in Ireland recently and it was drawn to my attention there are no homosexuals in Ireland. That's a fact. <laughs> there are no homosexuals in Ireland. That's because they're all in Britain working on our television screens. <laughs> now, tell me. I was never confused. Now tell me. <laughs> what, what, you, what job are you doing then? Uh, I'm a manager. You're a manager? Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. What up, son? A shop. A shop? <laughs> a shop. <laughs> <laughs> you see, manager, that conjured up the image of some bloke with an entire factory in front of him, you telling him all what to do. As it is, boop. <laughs> 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 Seamus, am I to peace? <laughs> Good luck to you, son. <laughs> but the first of our acts, the scene on Edinburgh and Beyond, is without a doubt one of the scientific marvels of the comedy world currently on the circuit. This lad has been showered with praise. Build up your applause. Nothing. I build up your applause. Nothing I can say will make a difference. Please welcome Mr. Chris Addison. Pleasure to be here. I was thinking about the whole business of sort of how we identify ourselves. Uh, uh, what started me on this was um, I did a gig in West London uh, a little while ago, and I was talking to the audience about uh, what they considered themselves to be in terms of, sort of nationality. This man said, uh, claimed that he was Iraqi Chinese, right? And I thought, wow, that's modern. <laughs> There's no other point in history where, you know, you'd meet somebody who was Iraqi Chinese. And it's a tough gig, being Iraqi Chinese. It's, it's hard, cos you really want to grow a moustache, but you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking about, you know, how, how, you know, how we identify ourselves in terms of race or nationality and religion. Uh, being one particular thing or another is, is increasingly irrelevant, as more and more of us are, uh, are born of, you know, mixed backgrounds, mixed races, mixed religions. I'm an example of this. Uh, myself, in the, my, um, my father's family were Viennese Jews, uh, and my mother's family were Lancastrian Anglicans, which makes me sort of uh, Jewish Angli Anglican Jew, uh, I suppose, which means I do believe I was personally chosen by God, but um, I don't like to make a fuss about it. <laughs> <laughs> they are all 
all together or not at all. I believe those are the rules. <laughs> there are, there are, there are two great religions, Judaism and, and, and Anglicanism, brilliant religions, but I've always felt slightly shortchanged that I wasn't born Catholic, because those people... It's a fucking fantastic. If you have to be a member of any religion, Catholicism is mental. It seems to me... It's camp. I think it's, it's just a camp. It's, it's you know, where, where, where the Church of England's very kind of... Jesus. Uh, you know. <laughs> Catholics are kind of, hello, Goddy. There's a showbiz field. It's a big, baroque, silly, fun religion. If you can get past the beating and the fiddling, uh, it, it's, it seems like a fun religion to be part of. They do things that are mental uh, and don't really care when you're, when you're questioned about it. Just bizarre things, like, uh, like throwing donkeys off churches. You know, you know the Spanish Catholic Church is. You know this? At, at Easter time, there's a town in Spain where they throw a donkey off. off. <laughs> we throw the donkey off the church <laughs> to commemorate the time that Jesus... <laughs> yes? Ah, oh, fuck off. <laughs> No reason to do it, but they all do it. All these towns in Spain have some bizarre animal harming ceremony <laughs> around about Easter. It's like they're trying to outdo each other. It's like Pamplona started it. We go, okay, we run the bulls through the streets, then we kill them in eating, yeah? Well, fuck you. We're gonna throw a donkey off a church, yeah? <laughs> fuck you, we're gonna throw a pig at the cliff, yeah? <laughs> fuck you, we're gonna put a rhino in a blender, yeah? <laughs> We're gonna get a giraffe, put him in a dress, put him on roller skates, push him down a hill, yeah? <laughs> Fuck you, we're gonna get an elephant blowing his trunk till he burst. <laughs> <laughs> so, a weirdly Latin way <laughs> of celebrating Easter. You'd never get that in the Anglican communion. We're far too diffident and reserved for that. There'd just be a terrified-looking vicar standing at the top of a church tower going, All right, Jeremy, hold the tarpaulin extremely steady. I'm lowering the gerbil down now. <laughs> it's a fantastic religion. You can't go wrong with Catholicism. This is a brilliant religion. All religion... I mean, even, you know, before it was kind of uh, fun <laughs> and baroque and there was a lot of gold and paintings involved, uh, uh, it was, you know, it's all about the afterlife. It's all about what happens when you die, basically, religion. That's, that's essentially what it is. That's why uh, the primitive people, before they had organised religion, they were into necromancy, which is... Uh, necromancy is basically getting in touch with the dead. Uh, or attempting to get in touch with the dead to ask for their advice. Uh, and why you'd ask the dead? <laughs> I don't know. They're the ones who fucked up. Aren't they? <laughs> what shouldn't I eat is more or less all you're going <laughs> to ask them that's actually of any use. But getting in touch with the dead, it always strikes me as it is a dangerous thing. And not for the usual kind of horror film stroke Catholic church kind of, ooh, you don't know the forces you're messing with, sorts of <laughs> reasons. I just think necromancy would be dangerous for me, just on the off chance that I outlive my wife. Because as it is, I have to phone her about three times a day to find out where stuff is in the house. If, if she goes before I do and I still think I can get in touch, it'll be a nightmare. I'll have to have my own personal medium in a cupboard, you know, with a special Ouija board with customised shortcuts on it, saying things like, have you tried the hall table, you know? <laughs> we gave that to Oxfam eight years ago. You know, that's another girl you're thinking of. You know, you know, <laughs> possibly work as a system, though, necromancy. Even, even if it's technically possible to get in touch with the dead, it's still nonsense, isn't it? It's still a rubbish system. Imagine, imagine trying to get in touch with your dad. Are you there, father? Father, are you there? Is that you, son? Yes, yes, I wanted to ask you. I'll just put your mother on. No, 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 wait, hey! That'd be it. You'd be there for three hours going, sorry, everybody, hold hands. <laughs> you would have thought that he got better harps in heaven. I don't know, Mum. I don't know. God. I say that primitive people, you know, were, 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 were into necromancy, but the, I, might, I'm, I don't know. I, I wasn't around at the time. The only evidence that I have for it is the archaeological evidence. That's the only way that I or anybody else knows about it. But it strikes me that how far can you trust archaeology anyway? It's bullshit, isn't it? It's lies and speculation to bolster travel sales, essentially. <laughs> Archaeology? Isn't it more? You've seen Time Team. You have. Every, even if you've pretended to be flicking when the other person came in the room. You've... No, I was just... You... No, I, I'm not interested. I, don't, I wonder what happened to the Romans. The, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll never know. Uh, you've seen it. 
Lying bastards, that fucking brummy, the wacky brummy with the, with the big hair, big grey hair, and the, yes, him, right? Colourful fucking jumpers, holding up a nodule of terracotta, going with this Tony, is very clearly a segment of milk jug handle uh, that would have been part of a tea set uh, owned by a heavy woman called Brenda, uh, <laughs> with a hair lip and a problem pronouncing the word Gillingham. You liar! <laughs> Lying bastard, you're making it up. The only thing that archaeology can tell us with absolute 100% certainty about ancient civilizations is they were all skeletons who lived underground. That's the only thing. <laughs> the, rest... the rest is simply lies and speculation. But it's amazingly popular. Archaeology is a, as a whole now, time team in general, is massive. Because it's, so, because it's been on so long, right, that it, it's really hard now to get a, a, a place doing archaeology at university. Their courses are completely oversubscribed because of the popularity of this thing. The chances of any of us staying in our graves past about 50 years <laughs> are pretty slim, because these fuckers are going to need projects. Right? <laughs> this is our opportunity to put them off the scent, right? We should make a pact. And a word of mouth pact, obviously, never write it down, never text it. Never email it. No written record must exist for these fuckers to find, right? We'll all agree to be buried in the same bizarre manner. <laughs> for the 900 years from now, archaeologists will be digging us up going, well, I can't understand it, Phil. Here's another one buried the same. Arse in the air, surrounded by eight toasters. Have absolutely no... <laughs> If you're prepared to put a bit of time and money into this, <laughs> get yourself buried in a spring-loaded coffin. <laughs> Designed so that when they finally prize you out, your body is propelled forwards <laughs> to a standing position, your arms fling out and a tape comes on going, I am what I am, I am my own special creation! <laughs> Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.